Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my Blitz Chess game number uh, 188. I was uh, white here, kicked off with knight f3, going for something different than the usual uh, e4 or d4. My opponent replies with uh, g6, going for a uh, maybe a king's Indian type of setup. So I play c4, and he plays bishop g7, and I go with g3, continuing with the English uh, framework here. And then he plays f5, which is a, a kind of a Dutch defense. If I had played uh, d4 here, we'd be in a Dutch defense. Um, but uh, I continue. I, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a different kind of opening. So I continue with bishop uh, to g2, and he goes knight f6. And now here, um, yeah, if I play d4, this would be a pretty standard position in the uh, Dutch defense to the, the queen's pawn opening. Um, the d4 opening, but uh, I play cat, a knight, develop my knight, putting pressure on these, cancel that, putting pressure on these uh, light squares, and uh, my opponent castles, and then uh, here I could still play d4, but I, I, again, I'm trying to avoid that, I go castles, and then he goes d6, and so now, uh, yeah, this is my last chance to play d4 and get into a normal opening, I play queen c2 here, which c is, you C is not a bad move, but it's part of a uh, plan, which is not correct. So uh, I'll show you this in a minute. I played queen c2 with the idea of supporting the move uh, e5, e4 rather. Um, and it's just not a good move in this position. It's, it's helping black out because he's already set up for a kingside attack. It's going to open up some uh, files for him, and uh, it, it just uh, helps black to get a good game, actually. <laughs> so it's a bad move. Uh, here I could still avoid it and, and get a decent game by just playing d3. d3 is a, a very logical move. Um, you know, it just opens up a file for the bishop, and I've got, you know, a pawn structure that gives both my bishops good diagonals um, and a slight edge for white here. I have ideas of putting a knight or a bishop on the g4 square, g5 square, and uh, expanding on the queen side. So comfortable game. Uh, instead, yeah, I was going for this e4 idea, and you'll see that right away uh, the, the engine thinks uh, I'm, I'm in a bit of trouble with uh, f takes e4. We'll get to uh, the, a position like that. So uh, my opponent plays knight c6 first, and I go d3, and then he goes uh, f takes e4. And now I guess uh, I should take back with the pawn and get, get to some somewhat <coughs> even position, but I took with the knight. Knight takes pawn takes. And, uh, and so this is a position that the engine was trying to get to in the earlier uh, situation as well by taking immediately instead of playing knight c6 first. But um, yeah, so this is better for um, black because he's got um, good squares to put his pieces on and he's got pressure on the f file. And um, now I have a good square here too, but I'm just a little bit slower. It takes, wow, see how many moves my knight has to go through to get to that square. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, just uh, better for uh, black. So that, that opening up with uh, e4 was just premature. I needed to continue my development with the uh, pawns uh, on the, the uh, d3 and e2 squares. Just go for this uh, kind of setup supporting the bishop's diagonal that way. Okay, but I didn't, and we get into this game where black is slightly better, but uh, uh, knight e1 is an interesting mistake, and, and I didn't realize it until uh, he plays the move knight d4, and now uh, after queen d3, <laughs> he's got a really good move here, which is uh, bishop to e2, forking the, the queen and the rook. But uh, what's interesting is that it was already bad, even here, um, because of the move knight d4. So as soon as I play knight e1, I'm in trouble. And what knight e1 has done, in addition to uh, <clears throat> getting out of the way of the bishop, it's trapped this rook. This rook has no squares. And so all that uh, black needs to do is defend the e2 square and put a bishop there, and he can win the exchange. And he can do that in one move with knight d4. It's a move with tempo, because my queen is supposed to, has to move. So say I go back to b1, I don't have to go to d3. Um, but it doesn't matter where I go because uh, bishop e2 still wins the exchange here. So uh, I was lucky that my opponent missed that idea. He played knight d4, queen d3, and then he played c5. So this is a part of a sequence that uh, 
Black had planned out ahead of time, putting the knight here and then uh, pushing the pawn. But it just goes to show the uh, importance of stopping to think a little bit on every move, uh, looking for those tactical shots. Um, it also illustrates, if you'll notice, uh, my opponent here is higher rated than me. Uh, it illustrates one way you can uh, defeat a higher rated opponent, which is you catch him on a bad day. <laughs> So he's uh, he's missing little tactics like that, uh, which uh, I expect normally he would uh, he would see. Um, okay, so but I still at this point I notice the problem with e2, and uh, there's only one way to defend against that threat. I can't bring a piece to defend that square. I have to um, block the bishop with f3. Um, so he retreats, and now um, <clears throat> this knight e1 move was part of a maneuver. I was planning to get my knight all the way up to this square, um, so I'm looking for a path like this. And so I continue, continue playing it. Knight c2, queen d7, and then I went knight e3, continuing in the path. Now the engine says I should stop and play um, a4 here, maybe just slow down um, Black's expansion on the queen side, or I could exchange off his knight here. Um, you know, I'm going to waste a couple of moves getting getting my knight to this square and uh, he can just exchange it off. So, so it's probably a better use for the knight to, to take here immediately. But anyway, I continue with my plan. Knight e3, rook f7, and knight d5. And we get into a situation where, where black is still uh, slightly better, but I haven't uh, lost the game yet. Um, bishop d5, he decides to take right away, and then uh, double his rooks. And now I want to... Um, I want to get rid of his knight, but I can't play this move bishop to uh, e3 here because the f3 pawn is hanging. So, for example, uh, bishop e3, yeah, knight takes f3 check, just, just wins a pawn. Yeah, so it's uh, queen, rook, and bishop against queen, rook, and bishop. And, um, yeah, it was a slow, a slow response from the... Uh, <laughs> The uh, program there. <clears throat> queen, rook, and bishop against queen, rook, and bishop, and uh, he's got an extra pawn. So um, I come up with the idea of, of maneuvering my bishop to c3, because I think eventually I'm going to have to get rid of this knight on d4. It's just too dominating a knight. So I play bishop d2, he goes b5, I go bishop to c3, continuing my plan, but this is a bit uh, dangerous now. You see, uh, he can play c4, kicking my queen, uh, bishop to h6. It's an idea, too. So if we back up, what is it like? It likes uh, b3 instead. Okay, so putting a break on uh, white's pawn, black's, putting a break on black's pawn advance to c5 is probably a good idea in this position. <clears throat> also, rook f2, preparing double rooks. And I guess I have a uh, move or two before this uh, knight becomes such a threat that I'm forced to trade it off. So I, I could play a little more slowly instead of going immediately for the trade. Um, but that's what I go for. And um, and this is interesting. It says if he were to play c4 first, so I guess this c4 is just a strong move. Let's check it out. c4. I have to move the queen. So it's a you know it's an intermediate move. He hasn't recaptured my bishop yet, so I'm a piece up. But I don't have time to do anything about it. There's no great, uh, <clears throat> there's no great uh, wild moves with the bishop. So move the queen back to d1, say, and then uh, then he takes, and it's got a pretty nice formation here with the pawns. And uh, we get into something like this later in the game, so you'll see this. Um, but he took uh, with the e pawn, and then I play rook a to e1. So. I'm letting him get a, a strong pawn uh, armada going on the queen side. It says, once again, I should play b3 and just try and slow this down. And yeah, b3 is basically the only position that uh, keeps me in the game. So after rook a e1, I'm, I'm probably losing with good play from black. And uh, he plays really well for a while here, although c4 again is the most precise way. c4, queen a6. Uh, queen b6, I guess, uh, it's tempting because, you know, he put the queen on the diagonal to the king, and he can push these pawns with tempo and, uh, and check there. So it sets up some dangerous threats. Um, I get off of the diagonal, 
<laughs> Once again, <laughs> the engine says play b3 first. The threat to the king is not immediate. So, uh, King h1, c4. Now I play c4, and so these pawns start rolling. So we finally got that move in because I never played b3 to prevent it. Um, queen drops back. He pushes ahead. And now I, I am trying to get counterplay, so I start pushing my pawns in the center. But uh, black's pawns are just closer and faster. So, but... Um, that bishop move was not the most precise move. Actually, uh, this is you know a battery with the queen and the bishop along this diagonal is potentially dangerous, but uh, it might be better if the queen were here and the bishop were there instead of uh, the bishop up here. So uh, the engine thinks rook e8 or b4, just pushing ahead with the pawns, that's kind of what I was expecting. It's a bit of a race. If I can get my pawns going faster than his, um, I would be in better shape, but uh, his pawns are just faster. But when it gives me time like that, a bishop d4, I can start pushing my pawns and uh, get back in the game. Although it says here, what, bishop h3? Ah, bishop h3 I missed. Bishop h3 is interesting. It's a threat to come to um, e6 and uh, pick up the exchange here. So the king moves to get out of that bishop e6 anyway, activating the bishop and uh, rook f6. So black is still better, but uh, at least I've gotten some activity for the bishop. Pushed him, gained a tempo or two, maybe. So I pushed ahead with the pawn move, e5, and then he takes. I take, and uh, he plays this really well. You can see uh, the engine is uh, <coughs> recommending these moves. I have to take with the bishop because uh, I... I um, want the rook to continue to, to defend the uh, e-pawn. So uh, take, and then he pushes on with uh, a5. It says bishop takes e5 can be played here. So there's a tactic I missed. Right, yeah, bishop takes e5 is completely playable because if I take it, he can take here. <laughs> and this is big trouble because uh, king here and then queen g1 check. Yeah, this is this is bad news for me. <laughs> in addition to picking up a pawn. Uh, okay, so I missed that. And uh, he plays a5. And now he's still got this uh, winning edge, but it's not nearly as strong as it once was, and I can continue to push my pawns in the center. So that's what's happening. I'm, it's a kind of a race here. I was maybe a bit anxious, over-anxious to push this pawn to e7. It says I should go back to... Uh, play bishop g2 to defend this pawn, yeah, instead of pushing ahead. So I get into trouble here, because he can take this pawn with check. But he plays uh, rook e8 first, which is a good move. And then, uh, yeah, I, I guess he can't take right away. If he tries to take with check, I can uh, hit the queen with my bishop, and then when the queen moves, I can take his rook. So he does have to save his rook first. And then I play queen f4. Uh, hoping maybe for a trade and then being able to advance these pawns. Um, but he plays queen takes d5. It says queen takes f4 is still his best try, so uh, it's still good for black, too. Queen takes, pawn takes, and bishop to c5. Yeah, this is the problem. I was thinking uh, the bishop might come to this square and I could push the other pawn, but when the bishop comes to the square on c5, I don't really have a good way to defend that. Um, and my bishop is too slow. I need to get my bishop to uh, this square, but it's a couple moves away. So it's all about uh, the race conditions here, and black is just faster in all of these lines. So he's still winning here. But he played queen takes d5. Gives me a bit of a tempo here with the bishop. And then he went to uh, c5. And it says, now this is this is really interesting here. It says queen d7 is the only way for black to keep his advantage. So when he played queen c5, now suddenly uh, uh, white has a good move here, which uh, I missed. <laughs> so I don't know who was keeping count, but there was a number of uh, missed tactics here. But uh, instructive, rook f1. It's not the first move I thought of because uh, I can just take this pawn, right? But then uh, this bishop is hanging. So I was concerned about the pawn and trying to defend it. So, But let's try other things against rook f1. Um, 
<clears throat> he doesn't want to take with the rook because obviously queen to f8 is checkmate. It says his best move is actually king to h8. And then queen here check takes and I get a queen. He takes and I get a rook. Ah, and I'm a whole piece up and he has an armada of pawns. So this is not a simple win by any means, but uh, white has an advantage here. Um, but because of these extra uh, pawns, uh, it could be, could be a bit tricky. But, uh, okay, it says with good play, uh, the white has the edge here. Interesting. <clears throat> so, yeah, so in this position, rook f1 is the way for white to uh, grab the advantage back from black. Um, I did not think of that. I was really just thinking of defending this pawn, and I played queen to e4. And I also noticed this check on the e6 might be dangerous, forcing his king to an awkward position. So uh, he plays bishop takes b2 and uh, queen a8 it says I should try here. Queen a8. Ah, uh, now that's an idea. Queen goes to a8. Um, it's distracting this rook. So if rook takes, bishop takes, um, there's no way to stop this pawn from queening. Queen takes, rook takes, and uh, once again it's three pawns or pawns against a rook. So uh, so this advanced pawn is quite a source of counterplay. So I went for queen e6 check here, and now <clears throat> this is one of those critical moments, <laughs> yet another critical moment of the game. There's only uh, two moves that he has, and one's winning and one's losing. And uh, the move he played, queen, king to h8, is the losing move. And it's not really uh, obvious why it should be losing. At least not to me. Um, king g7 seems a bit more dangerous, but uh, it gives the king some escape squares. So after this, uh, queen d7 going after the rook. And then queen b4. Ah, attacking my rook. Rook f1. Yeah, nothing's going with check, so rook takes e7. Ah, queen b4 hit my rook and defended the pawn. That's why that's why queen b4 is a good move. It hits my rook and it stays in touch with the pawn. So um, if I move my rook somewhere else to try and hold on to that pawn, I could try rook to e6. And then he's got bishop to e5. Yeah, so we can kick my rook around. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's not a good move. He has bishop to e5. What's that about? He seems like it's uh, sacrificing the rook. Ah, I mean sacrificing the bishop, but then queen to b1 check is the problem. Because that's checkmate. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yeah, queen to b1 check is a threat right here, actually. So I have to play a move like h3. Uh, pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go back. He played uh, king h8. So this, we were looking at king g7, queen d7, queen b4, and now rook e3. Ah. The reason why queen b1 is not a threat here is because the bishop is in the way. So he can move the bishop away with the tempo, and uh doesn't matter where he puts it uh, as long as he, uh, <clears throat> as long as I can't uh, deliver a check to his king or something like that. And then he's got this terrible threat of uh, queen b1 here. So uh, I don't have time to take the bishop. Interesting. Okay. So... Anyway, in this position, after queen e6 check, he's got two moves, and, and one of them wins and one of them loses, and he plays the losing move, king h8. And now the most accurate follow-up for me is queen to uh, d7, hitting his rook. And then if he tries this queen b4 maneuver again, hitting my rook, um, what happens is the rook goes with check. That's, that's the big difference. Whereas at the king on g7, there is no check in this line. So... Um, after king h8, that's what I should play, queen d7. I had a different idea here. I played the move bishop to d5. Um, 
I was thinking there might be some threat here which would um, distract his rook away from the defense of this square um, e8 so I could queen but it's a little bit too slow once again um, so he played the move uh, d2 just attacking my uh, rook and now I don't have time to play this check because uh, he takes <clears throat> and then uh, I can't take back I have to do something about my rook here which goes with check and then he's coming in and mating me so uh, so my plan was to uh, was not working out here, and I had to just block the uh, pawn. And so once again, uh, black is just winning. <laughs> so I don't know how many swings back and forth this was, but uh, he makes his final mistake here, which is the move c3, kind of the one move on the board he can't play because uh, he needed to protect this diagonal. His king is uh, <clears throat> vulnerable in the corner. It has only... Um, these three squares to go to, and the bishop covers the light square. So if I can get on the dark square diagonal, it is game over, and that's how the game ended. So uh, anyway, pretty uh, fun game to play and a lot of interesting tactics. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, see you next time. Bye.